Now, many of you might be endurance athletes or also enjoy exercise besides heavy weight bearing exercise. And there are several studies exploring whether or not endurance activity can increase or decrease androgen levels and whether or not you combine endurance activity and weight training, whether or not that has any effect if you do the endurance activity first or second. And the takeaway from all of this was that endurance activity, if performed first, leads to decreases in testosterone during the weight training session as compared to the same weight training session done first followed by endurance activity. In other words, if you want to optimize testosterone levels, it seems to be the case that weight training first and doing cardio type endurance activity afterward is the right order of business. Now, when these are done on separate days, it doesn't seem to have an effect. There is, they showed no statistical interaction, but it seems that if you're going to do these in the same workout episode, that it's move heavy loads first, then do cardiovascular exercise. So there's a little bit of data looking specifically at how endurance exercise impacts testosterone and its derivatives. And it's very clear that high intensity interval training, sprinting, et cetera, which somewhat mimics the neural activity that occurs while moving heavy weight loads is going to increase testosterone. There's ample evidence for that in the, in the literature. And that endurance exercise that extends beyond 75 minutes is going to start to lead to reductions in testosterone, presumably by increases in cortisol. But of course, the intensity of the exercise is going to be important too. You know, no one ever, I don't think anyone really believes that hiking for the three hours is going to reduce your testosterone. It, whereas I think if one were to go out and run hard for three hours, that you can imagine there'd be reductions in testosterone by way of increases in cortisol. And so while this area certainly needs more research, it's pretty clear that limiting the endurance exercise to 75 minutes or less, not making it too intense is one way to keep cortisol from going through the roof. But I've talked on previous episodes and there are a lot of others who have talked out there about how to clamp cortisol, how to keep cortisol more reduced. This is also one of the reasons why you can imagine that various individuals, either for competition or just for their own purposes, are rely on testosterone therapy, exogenous testosterone, not just for weight training, but for endurance exercise. So this is one of the reasons why every once in a while, a professional cyclists will get popped for performance enhancing drugs, meaning they'll get caught. And it's not just that they're increasing red blood cells through EPO and things of that sort. Oftentimes they're also taking testosterone, not because they wanna be large or have massively hypertrophied muscles, but because they, because they're injecting testosterone, they don't have to worry about cortisol induced reductions in testosterone. They can just clamp or keep their testosterone levels high. Not something I'm recommending, but I'm just justifying the rationale for why an endurance athlete would want to do that at all.